I'm Margaret Ryan here at the University of Nevada Las Vegas Cox Pavilion at the National Clean Energy Summit 2.0 and I'm joined by Carl Pope who's been the head of the Sierra Club for many many years now you're in the process of moving to a new role aren't you I will be stepping up into the role of chairman probably at the end of this year Margaret well congratulations on well, thank that thank you very much tell me from your long perspective what did you see here that struck you today? Well, this conversation continues to grow and develop. And if you compare it with the meeting we had here a year ago, okay. we are much clearer now how we get clean energy done. We're much clearer now on the economics of clean energy. And frankly, a year ago, we still didn't have the economic collapse we're facing now. So the urgency of getting clean energy done is much greater than it was a year ago. And you heard that urgency in the comments you heard from the panel. Uh, yeah, there was a great deal of emphasis on clean jobs. We also heard an emphasis on natural gas that I don't recall from last year. The natural gas play has been moving. America has actually huge, recently developed reserves of natural gas. It's a much cleaner fuel than coal, about less than 50% as much carbon. We can deploy it quickly, and as Boone Pickens likes to say, if we use it in our trucks and our cars, it saves us from importing foreign oil. The other thing that was different this time is you had two secretaries, two cabinet secretaries sitting at the table. A year ago, you didn't have an administration that wanted to hear this story. Now you have an administration that wants to tell this story. But there was a lot of talk about getting the policy right. And that is one big change. There's already been a huge change in policy, hasn't there? Well, there's been actually a change in direction, but not yet that much of a change in policy. It's still true, for example, that in most states, if you put too many solar cells on your rooftop, you can't sell the power back to your power company. It's still true in many places that if you paint your roof white, you're breaking the law. It's still true in many states that you can't get easily a permit to make your house more efficient or generate your own electricity. So until we really align the incentives so that the people who have the opportunity to generate clean electricity and clean energy are allowed to do it and turn loose, we're not going to solve this problem. So there's still a big policy challenge. So you don't see it just a policy at the federal level. It's something that has to permeate down into the state and local level as well. That's right. I think the federal government needs to set the tempo. The federal government needs to set the benchmarks. But we are going to have to write building codes that reflect the very different conditions in Seattle and Las Vegas. You don't really want the same kind of windows in Seattle that you have in Las Vegas, but you really want high performance, low waste windows, low utility windows in both places. I didn't hear much of any mention today of the pending climate change legislation, except kind of off to one side. And I was a little surprised there wasn't more talk of the Waxman-Markey bill and its fate in the Senate. Did that strike you at all? I think this conversation was directed outside of the Beltway. I think they were trying not to have a Beltway conversation. And frankly, the public conversation about the climate bill has for the moment been eclipsed for most Americans by the health care bill, which seems to be teed up first. So I thought that was just a reflection of where the news cycle is. Okay. What do you hope comes out of a, d a discussion like this? What do you see it as accomplishing? I think the American people want and deserve new kinds of partnerships. They need to see business and labor and researchers and government working together. The American people understand and want a new energy future. They recognize it's the key to a clean energy recovery. They recognize it's the key to national energy security and independence. And they recognize it's the key to curbing the climate crisis. And you saw today that kind of a partnership. You saw Boone Pickens, who spent a great deal of money trying to make sure Al Gore did not become president, talking about the partnership he's forged with Al Gore around the clean energy future, I think that's what the American people want to see. I think that's what the American people deserve from their leaders, and I think they saw it today. Hey, Carl Pope, longtime director of the Sierra Club, about to become chairman. Thank you so much Thank for joining us. Thank you very much. Us. Take care. I'm Margaret Ryan at the University of Nevada Las Vegas Cox Pavilion at the National Clean Energy Summit 2.0.